and Professor Nuno Pereira de Magalhães. Uh, Ambassador Song Ho, he, he graduated in international relations from the Seoul National University. He joined the Foreign Service and he served first as Consul General uh, of uh, Korea in uh, Chicago. He was then posted to India, to the Embassy of Korea in the United States, back in uh, Korea, back in Seoul. He was Deputy Director General for Foreign Affairs. He served at the Prime Minister's office. He went to uh, Indonesia as number two of the embassy. He was Director General of Policy Planning. He was number two in Canada. He was ambassador to Mongolia. And since June of 2019, he is the uh, Republic of Korea ambassador to Portugal. And uh, we will also have today the professor Nuno Pereira de Magalhães is a, a Portuguese professor at the uh, EU University in Madrid. Uh, he has been a researcher of the IPRI, of the Portuguese Institute of International Relations. He has a PhD and a master's from the University of Cambridge. But he has had during his career a particular interest in uh, Korea and in the security in Northeast Asia. He, he, he was a professor and researcher at the Korea University, at Seoul National University, and Sogang University. He is also uh, a research associate at Harvard and a teaching university in um, Colombia. I hope that you can hear me. Can you hear me? No. Perfectly. Yes. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, we, we, we have had the relations between our two countries uh, for 60 years. During those years, we completely the legal framework of the relations, I mean, in the cultural field, in the economical field, avoiding double uh, tributation. And so the legal framework is here. We have the tools. Uh, we do know that Korea uh, is a country with more than 50 million inhabitants, uh, that it has a GDP larger than Russia, Australia, and Brazil, that the Republic of Korea is an economic powerhouse, but it is also a democratic country. Uh, the, the, the biggest export of uh, the Republic of Korea are semiconductor chips, integrated chips, well ahead of cars and cellular phones and semiconductor chips. I, of the key elements I, I just heard you. Tell Ambassador that you will be doing the. Uh, yeah, okay. 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 So I wanted to add that before the pandemic, about 200,000 uh, Koreans visited Portugal each year. Our bilateral, bilateral relations have been growing, but there is much still to do. And it is one of the reasons why are, we are here today. And now I will give the floor to Ambassador of uh, the Republic of Korea. Please, Ambassador, the floor is yours. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon. Thank you so much for your kind uh, introduction. And the, uh, this is my personal privilege and uh, pleasure uh, to be here with you. And uh, 
that I will start uh, the, the, my uh, test speech. Okay, good afternoon, uh, Ambassador Jose Freitas Ferraz, members of the Diplomatic Institute, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. In marking 60th anniversary of diplomatic ties between Korea and Portugal in 2021, uh, various celebrations are being held in the two countries. I'd like to congratulate the, the webinar, among others, to discuss the, the future development of bilateral relations, which I think is a timely topic in taking stock of current status and envisioning the future development for the next uh, years to come. I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to Ambassador Fehas, uh, Director of the Institute and the staff for preparing the event. I'm very delighted to be invited here to share some thoughts I have had for the past two years in Portugal with such a distinguished audience today. Since establishment of the diplomatic ties in 1961, Korea and Portugal have developed friendly and cooperative relations. However, I like to uh, reflect on what characteristics can be clearly stated for the bilateral relationship. As Ambassador uh, has already mentioned, I worked in uh, several countries during my diplomatic career. And these countries have an image that quickly comes to mind to Korean people, like United States as a strong alliance and Canada for a veterans affairs diplomats because they send the third largest troops to the Korean world. India and Indonesia as economic cooperation partners in Asia, and Mongolia is considered as a uh, brethren country with a long history with Korea. Bilateral cooperation and exchanges with these countries has been enhanced based on these perceptions respectively. Portugal is known to Korean as the pioneer that initiated the age of discovery, which connected the humans across the world, living in each scattered continent. In that sense, Portugal made a great contribution to development of the human history. Meanwhile, since Korea and Portugal are ne neither geographically neighboring countries nor having shared history, and thus, there were no meaningful exchanges and cooperation between the two countries in historic terms. It is not easy to clearly define bilateral relations. Unlike the countries mentioned earlier, there is a reason why it is challenging to explore steps toward the future between our two countries as we celebrate 60th anniversary of diplomatic ties. As you are fully aware, Korea is one of the divided countries in the world. Security and safety above all is a core interest for Korea, and thus relations with neighboring countries around the Korean Peninsula are very important in this connection. For example, talks to deal with North Korean nuclear issue are one of the key topics in the news. With three parties of two Koreas and the United States in the past, and four parties involving China, and later six parties including Japan and Russia until a few years ago. There have been some opinions on the eight-party talks with ASEAN and the EU, but their idea has not been materialized in reality yet. In terms of the economy, several countries are prioritized by Korea. Portugal, however, is less significant in comparison. Trade and investment are difficult sectors for a government to engage in because it's up to the, the private sector to make its final decisions. Geographical distance between the two countries, Korea and Portugal, as I mentioned earlier, is one of the, the factors which is not conducive to increase uh, trade and investment so far. In spite of these limitations coming from security and economic areas, I'm sure bilateral relationship between Korea and Portugal will further develop in the future. And here are some points why I'm mentioning this. First of all, 
exchanges of high-ranking officials between the governments are significant in maintaining mutual interest. President Marcel Hubert de Souza wishing the return visit by Korean president following the official visit by former president Kabak Silva showed his strong willingness to pay a visit to Korea when I presented the credentials. Korean president's visit to Portugal was discussed in a concrete way last year. Prime Minister Antonio Costa's visit to Korea was in the implementation stage in 2019 when it was postponed at the last moment due to the domestic circumstances in Portugal. We expect uh, his visit to Korea at the earliest date after the, the situation is uh, stabilized. I hope that the exchanges of high-ranking uh, officials bring to uh, realization soon, which will serve as an important, moment, important momentum in further strengthening the bilateral relations. The exchanges between the two parliaments are noteworthy. We already witnessed a mutual visit by Korean National Assembly Speaker in 2018, and by his counterpart, Dodor Feu Rodriguez, in 2019. Korean Deputy Speaker is also scheduled to visit Portugal next week to commemorate the 60th anniversary of diplomatic ties. The recent launch of Parliamentarian Friendship Group of the two countries' parliament is sure to contribute to further exchanges and cooperation. Economic cooperation between the two countries continue to strengthen as well. Korean companies invest in Portugal hire about 2,000 employees, and this number is the same despite COVID-19 situation. In addition, bilateral trade in uh, 2020 reached 1.1 billion US dollars, increased by 200 million dollars from the previous year and the accumulated investment between the two countries was 900 million US dollars. But I think that this is not significant out of our economic power. That is to say, we still have great potential for further expansion in the future. A vice minister level joint economic committee meeting between Korea and Portugal will be held next month in Seoul, in which ways to improve bilateral economic cooperation are expected to be discussed. Last year, Hana Kyocell of Korea won bids and is going to build six solar power plants with 315 megawatt capacity in Portugal, a MOU on ICT cooperation between the relevant ministries will also be signed soon, and therefore we anticipate the further cooperation on the re renew renewable energy and the circular economy to move forward in the future. Korean businessmen's attention on the web summit in Lisbon are also on the rise. A Korean company round out the top three at the pitching competition in the web summit for the first time last year, which I hope encourages more Korean startups to turn their eyes to the Web Summit in the future. Above all, what is most hopeful is that people-to-people -people exchanges between our two countries have been dynamic. As Ambassador Behaz already mentioned last year, more than 200,000 Koreans visited Portugal, making it the ninth most visited country by Koreans among the EU member states. Considering the direct flight between Seoul and Lisbon were already operated twice a week for the first time in 2019, and later were announced to increase to three times a week before the, the pandemic. I hope direct flights to be resumed soon, and thus more human exchanges are expected when the COVID situation comes to an end. At this point, I'd like to reflect on what diplomacy is and how the relations between the countries are developed. 
I think that the key role in diplomatic activities and development of the relations is nothing but the people. As private exchanges increase, so business activities follow suit and ways to explore institutional cooperation framework to support them will encourage diplomatic activities and further develop relations. In this context, I like to emphasize that the people-to-people -people exchanges should be defined as not just a quantitative concept, such as the number of people traveling between the two countries, but a qualitative one in which people of both countries are affectionate and friendly towards each other. Human exchanges based on the differentiate and affection are worthy. With that in mind, our embassy has been committed to engaging in some activities for the Portuguese people, inspiring them to have a warm heart to Koreans. Our embassy donated the uh, tablet pieces and personal protective gears for the, the students and the, the medical staff to the Portuguese Red Cross Society and the Ministry of Health earlier this year to share the pain of those suffering from COVID-19. We Koreans have a strong belief education is a foundation for the future national development. And that was verified that education is a requisite to foster human capital in the process of national development for the past years in Korea. I hope those tablet pieces are used for the Portuguese students to have online classes at the unusual time of pandemic situation and on the world. We also have a plan to deliver food for the vulnerable later. Our embassy made efforts for the Korean culture to be more promoted among the Portuguese through TV programs. To this end, the time capture of nature, a Korean documentary, an eight episodes Korean documentary on the Korean cultural heritage will be broadcast at the RTP1 channel every Sunday for eight weeks, starting from uh, this Sunday, May 16th. Korean food programs will also be televised starting uh, the tomorrow at the same channel. To celebrate the 60th anniversary, our embassy will hold the first the ambassador's taekwondo championship and will also participate in the book fairs held in both Lisbon and Porto respectively to display books translated into both languages for the first time. In addition, I'm personally excited to have audio guide service in Korean language launched on the Hapon Hapop tour buses operating in Porto in May 2021. Following the tour buses in Lisbon in 2020, and the Korean flags can now be seen on the buses that provide uh, such services. This is the first of its kind to start the services in the Korean language on Hapon Hapop tour buses operating in more than 150 cities around the world. I'm sure all the Korean tourists will feel much closer to Portugal and the Portuguese people whenever they listen to the audio service in Korean and see the Korean flag in the streets of Lisbon and Porto. On April 15th, the day the agreement was signed to establish diplomatic ties 60 years ago, a table pattern, the symbol in the center of the Korean flag, lit up the stage of the King George I in Plaza to Comercio with the cooperation of the Lisbon City Hall. This was the first collaboration between the Embassy and the Lisbon City Hall. And standing in the Plaza on, the, on that day, I was thrilled to watch lighting with a strong sense of reconfirmation that Korea and Portugal are neighboring countries. The two peoples of Korea and Portugal share common values for the respect of liberal democracy and human rights based on 
similar historical backgrounds and successful democratic Jewish experiences. Moreover, the fact two countries geographically located on the peninsulas, sharing values of diversity and openness, makes them have a goodwill and friendship feelings towards with each other. In commemoration of the 60th anniversary this year, our embassy will strive to let the Portuguese people perceive Korea closer to them through public diplomacy. In order to promote the further cooperation on all fields, institutional frameworks like consultation channels and the several cooperation MOUs between the two countries are ready to act. As a Korean proverb says, all the bees become valuable after threaded into a necklace. Exchanges and practical cooperation between the two countries will increase only when such institutional frameworks are actually implemented. The will and endeavor to put the rhetoric into real actions will be the key to driving the development of the bilateral relations. In the wake of the recent COVID-19 situation, video conferences, video conferences give us a good opportunity to get closer. Now the fact that Korea and Portugal are geographically way apart is becoming a mere pretext. I delivered a lecture to the Lisbon University students last week. I found it much easier for both governments to communicate and address with each other through video conferencing. Whereas a dialogue through the embassy is still useful. It is more meaningful to have a, a direct dialogue between the officials in charge at the headquarters in the capital city through a video conference. I strongly recommend the idea for the headquarters to give it a thought. The two countries are at a crucial point in promoting a further in a higher level of relationship for the next 60 years, relying on their form 60 years cooperation and exchanges. Two academic conferences are scheduled to be held in Seoul in late May to discuss the future vision of bilateral relations. These kinds of academic exchanges are anticipated to serve as a strong base for sustainable promotion of people-to-people -people exchanges between Korea and Portugal. I'd like to uh, once again express my gratitude to the Diplomatic Institute for hosting this website webinar and hope that all of you will continue to support and encourage the development of bilateral relations between Korea and Portugal. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so Thank you. much, Ambassador. Thank you so much for a very uh, exhaustive balance of our bilateral relations and also for the concrete suggestions that you mentioned during your, your, your speech. I will now give the floor to Professor Nuno Pereira de Magalhães. Please, Professor. The floor. Thank you, Ambassador. Can you hear me well? Yes. Uh, I will try to share my uh, PPT. Uh, let me see if I can, if I can do this. Um, Okay, can you can you see the the PowerPoint correctly? Yes. Uh, Ambassador, can you? Yes, okay. Yes, we can we can see the PowerPoint very okay. well. Please thank go you. Ahead. Yes. Thank you. Um, first of all, um, thank you so much for the invitation. It's really a tremendous pleasure to be here at this webinar. So I would like to, 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 to say hello in the first place to, to Ambassador Fertig uh, Fraj and thanking him for organizing this. Um, I would also like to, to, to say hello to, to Ambassador. Oh, it's always a pleasure to to see you and thank you so much for your very interesting um, presentation. Um, what brings me here today, fortunately, it's a more pleasant topic than those that I usually deal with, because uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm an expert in international security first and foremost. 
um, and I work with issues such as North Korean um, nuclear weapons and conflicts among states. So to be here and to talk about two countries that I love, you know, my, my home country and my second home, what I consider to be my second home, South Korea, it, it's really a privilege. And I'm going, um, I'm actually going to claim in the middle of this, of this, um, uh, this talk that um, from a personal perspective, the greatest achievement in the history of diplomacy resulted from Portuguese and Korean um, cooperation. Um, but anyway, what I'm going to do here today is to talk about Portugal and South Korea relations from a Portuguese perspective. So obviously I'm not going to be as uh, institutional as Mr. Ambassador Oh, who is representing Korea. Uh, my main interest here would be to, to highlight what I consider to be the most relevant um, points, even if I'll be talking about some issues that I'm not an expert about. So I'm not an economist, I'm not an, an expert in South Korean politics, not even in Portuguese politics, but I've been um, um, dealing with, with, um, with um, especially Korean issues for long, and I lived there for almost eight years. So I have, um, let's say, um, an informed perspective about our relations, and I would also like to share with you some of my thoughts on how to improve those relations. Um, and these will be suggestions, food for thought, opening a kind of forum that will discuss the, the probabilities of cooperation. Um, so here I included in the in the first um, in my first um, uh, slide, I included images of um, BTS, um, the most famous uh, Korean K-pop band, and also um, uh, Paul Bento uh, after winning uh, the uh, East Asian Cup for um, South Korea. So this reflects uh, proximity between uh, our countries. So this is the outline. I'm going to introduce the topic, talking about two smaller giants. I think that Portugal and South Korea, in their own way, are in fact giants. Then I'm going to outline some some um, topics on bilateral diplomacy, politics, economy. Uh, I think that Ambassador uh, already covered um, most of these um, issues. Um, then I'm going to talk a little bit more about culture and then explore some of what may be benefits for Portugal in deepening ties with South Korea. Um, so I work in the field of international relations and I come from a traditional um, theory of IR called realism. For us realists, um, competition is endemic in international politics. Um, anarchy pushes states to, to compete against each other. And in this kind of environment, power becomes the most useful tool, um, which consequently leads us to, to claim that international politics is dominated by great powers. States that hold the greatest amounts of military and economic resources. However, there are some exceptions, of course. Uh, we have um, individual entrepreneurs who play relevant role in international politics. Rafael Lemkin and the Genocide Convention of 1948, for example, or Ben, ben Ferencz and the promotion of um, aggression um, as, a, as an international crime. Uh, we have NGOs such as uh, Amnesty International or Human Rights Watch who are doing great jobs um, in promoting um, noble causes. Uh, we have IGOs as the UN and the European Union who in their own way try to, to promote peace and, and cooperation. And of course we have smaller powers who also play important roles in politics. Um, for example, when it, when it comes to countries that have been the, the ones promoting um, green policies the most, we see countries like Denmark, like Luxembourg, like Finland, on the top of the ranking. Uh, when it comes to, to countries that try to promote more alternative foreign policies, we see, for example, Sweden uh, promoting its um, feminist foreign policy nowadays. And of course, we have Portugal and Korea. And Portugal and Korea, I think, have uh, reached um, unexpected 
heights. For example, Portugal was able to build um, a maritime uh, transcontinental empire. Uh, South Korea achieved one of the most drastic, amazing processes of development that, that the world has ever witnessed since the end of the Korean War in 1953 until the present. Both countries nowadays are considered safe, scoring very high and high um, in, in rankings such as um, the Global Peace Index. Both countries are considered friendly. They are considered educated. They are considered cultural hubs. Look at the fact that Portuguese is spoken by 250 million people. Look at the fact that South Korea at the moment represents a cultural hub, uh, not only in East Asia, but in, in regard to all over the world. Look at the way that teenagers in Europe and in the US are now listening to, to BTS, a K-pop band. Look at the way that um, Korean movies um, have achieved su su success in, in Hollywood and look at the way that uh, Korean dramas are exported all over um, East Asia. And finally, both countries um, score very high in the standards of living, not to mention about the very positive image that these countries have, uh, not only among um, global masses, but also among global political elites. And for this, we have to thank our excellent diplomatic machineries that are so well represented today. Both um, Portuguese and Korean diplomats um, are considered you know, to be on top of the game, uh, illustrated by the number of um, high ranking positions that both countries have been able to achieve in recent um, in, in the recent uh, past and in the present. So look at the UN Secretary General as an example. Okay, wait a second. I think I have an issue here. Sorry. Okay. So let's start with bilateral diplomacy. Um, as Ambassador pointed out, um, we um, the, the first Europeans to reach Korea um, were Portuguese. So this is, um, I think, a highly symbolic, um, uh, highly symbolic event for both countries' relations. Um, the formal relations between Portugal and South Korea were established, of course, in, in 1961. Uh, our relations have been consolidated by high-level uh, visits, such as the, the mentioned visit of uh, President uh, Aníbal Cavaco Silva in 2014 that met President Park geun and also the visit of uh, Prime Minister In Akion in 2019. We can see him here meeting um, Antonio um, Costa. Um, in terms of, um, of Portuguese diplomatic um, positions, I have to highlight the continuous support of uh, Portuguese diplomacy uh, towards uh, a peaceful solution for what is um, happening in the in the Korean uh, Peninsula. Not only the disarmament of nuclear disarmament of North Korea, but also um, a peaceful reunification of the peninsula. Um, and Portugal was able to 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 play a specific role um, in the UN when it presided over the committee, the UN Security Council Committee 17. 18 in 19 uh, in 2011 and 2012 giving a contribution to the stabilization uh, of the process in during a period where we witnessed a very fragile and potentially tumultuous uh, power transition in North Korea with the passing of Kim Jong Il and the rise to power of um, Kim Jong Un in late 2000 and 11. Um, in terms of politics, curiously, po uh, Portugal and uh, South Korea share similar geopolitical positions uh, in Eurasia. This has brought benefits and al also um, tragedy to our countries. Why? Because evidently we 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 became in, we became involved in in great power politics, particularly in the quest of expansionist um, powers in Europe, continental powers such as Spain and, and France to control the continent uh, and being supported, of course, 
by uh, balancers such as the UK and nowadays the United States. In the case of South Korea, we all know that the, the country suffered an occupation from a Japanese expansionist um, empire uh, from 1910 to 1945. But in any case, we, we share the, that common geopolitical um, dimension, which I think is something else that should unite us. Um, in terms of preferences, as emphasized in 2019 in an interview to Arirang TV by Ambassador Manuel Gonçalves Jesus, um, Portugal and South Korea are like-minded countries. They share the same preferences in international arenas. So both countries are promoters of democracy. Um, Portugal became a democracy in the middle of 1970s. South Korea became a democracy in the late 1980s. So we are relatively recent democracies, but strong champions in the promotion of that regime. We are also supporters of multilateralism um, and of causes such as um, human rights. At the level of the economy, as Ambassador O pointed out, we have been increasing our economic ties. However, the weight of both countries in the respective economies is not as high as it could be. Um, for example, in 2017, South, South Korea was only the 43rd trading partner of Portugal, accounting only for 0.23% uh, of our exports. Um, Portugal, I think, for South Korea is, is, um, is an interesting option of economic cooperation because we are not only a small market of 10, 10 million people, we are also uh, we can also help to open doors um, to, to European market, even if, of course, there is an FTA uh, in force since 2015 between the European Union and, and between um, South Korea. But it's always good to have privileged uh, partners and also Lusophone markets such as Brazil, Angola and, and Mozambique. Uh, in terms of statistics, I don't know if this is going to be if the PPT is going to be accessible to, to the participants in this uh, webinar. But um, in any case, I will leave you here the, the, this um, data. Um, I don't have a lot of time to, to talk about it, but the, the main idea is that um, Portugal continues to, to have a, a deficit um, in our in our commercial balance with, um, with South Korea, which is also something that we should um, look at when we talk about increased cooperation. Um, now, when it comes to cultural uh, ties, we have witnessed an, uh, an increase in, in traveling, particularly um, as Ambassador noted, there was, a, and both Ambassadors noted that there has been an increase in the number of, um, of South Korean um, visitors um, to Portugal, but also uh, Portuguese um, visitors to to uh, South Korea. Um, the, the, the ties have also been increased uh, through sports. You know, Ronaldo is a, has a big fan base in um, in um, uh, South Korea um, through the arts. Um, so, the, for instance, uh, there is an interest in in South Korea for for fado, for Portuguese cinema, for Portuguese. Um, um, uh, modern uh, painters. Um, I included here um, a picture of uh, Miss uh, Lee Jinsun, who had the chance to to sing uh, Fado to to Amalia. Uh, I've read about this uh, and I found it very interesting. Uh, above we have a Portuguese um, port a group of uh, Portuguese youngsters performing a K-pop song. And I included also a photo of myself visiting the, the DMZ. So the, the, this kind of interest in, in each other's cultures have been um, increasing. In terms of food, for example, we have seen a, an, an increase uh, in the number of uh, Korean restaurants in Lisbon. Now we have, if I'm not mistaken, two Korean restaurants in Lisbon, two supermarkets, two Korean supermarkets in Lisbon. Uh, in Korea, we have a, a, a restaurant that is uh, specializes in Portuguese food and Portuguese wine, uh, Namsan Winery, located in, in the area of Itaewon. Before, we had a very famous chicken place in the area of, uh, of um, Hongdae. 
Um, and of course, Portuguese wine continues to be the, the staple of our um, of the introduction of, of, of um, Portuguese gastronomy to the Koreans alongside dishes such as um, ektar, sorry, pastel de nata. Uh, in terms of economic, uh, in terms of academic exchanges, we've also seen more um, uh, Portuguese students moving to, to Korea, uh, Korean students moving to Portugal. Myself, I benefited from 2005 to 2008 of a, a scholarship from the from the Korean government to study at um, at Sogang University. Um, in the previous Korean university where, where I was teaching at uh, Hanguk University of Foreign Studies, only in the Seoul campus we had more than 300 students. Uh, something that has been promoted by the embassy and also by Institut Camões and uh, by Professor Maria João Amaral, who has been teaching there since 2005. And of course, we have a rising number of Luso-Korean families. And here, allow me to be a little bit sentimental, um, because this is precisely what I meant by the, the greatest achievement, personally speaking, um, for me, results from uh, inter- uh, from Portuguese and, and Korean cooperation, which was the, the birth of my, my daughter, Raon. So she was born in, in Korean, she's, she's Luso-Korean. So I think that she illustrates uh, two peoples uh, coming together. Also, it was, was being emphasized by, by Ambassador Oh, the, the end result of diplomacy should always be this, of uh, merging, bringing people um, together. So what kind of benefits, um, I know I don't have a lot of time, but what kind of benefits can Portugal expect from, from increasing cooperation uh, with Korea? Um, I highlighted uh, some points here. Um, tourism, uh, of course, our uh, Portuguese economy is highly dependent on, on tourism. Estimates on that dependence range from roughly 18% to 23-24% of Portuguese economy being dependent on this um, sector. In, 1990, in 2019, Korea occupied the eighth place in terms of countries spending more money in, in tourism. Uh, in 2019, more than uh, 150,000 South Korean tourists visited Portugal. And even during the pandemic, 10,000 tourists visited the country. Um, another obvious um, target would be the, the exports of goods such as wine, cork, olive oil, shoes, um, services. Um, I'll leave you here. Um, um, this, this data allows you to see how there has been an increase of uh, Portuguese uh, presence in the, the Korean wine market, but at the same time, how it is still very residual and we lose in competition with, with the French, with Spanish, with Chilean, with South African, with Australian um, wines. In terms of companies, um, exporting to Korea, there has also been an increase um, and this is uh, ISAP data provided by um, Dr. Joana who was working there for years and I, I saw how she pushed for um, um, for um, the, the, the rise in the presence of, of Portuguese companies there. So in 2012 there were 394 companies exporting to South Korea. Now, in 2018, we find 657. For example, we do technologies, Ramirez, uh, Meiduzia, Quiz Numerico, that also works with, with, with wines, have recently entered the South Korean uh, market with the support of ISEP and Joana Neff. Um, Korea is important to Portugal, not only because uh, Korea occupies the 10th place in terms of, uh, of GDP, uh, and not only because it's a fourth Asian economy, but also because it integrates the recently created um, regional comprehensive economic partnership that combines uh, all the 10 members of ASEAN, uh, South Korea, China, Japan, New Zealand and Australia. So this can also open big opportunities for um, Portugal. Lastly, technological partnerships. Um, for example, uh, in, the, in the field of renewable energy or even in international cooperation in certain regions. My colleague and friend Luis Ma proposed in 2014 that Portugal and Korea could cooperate in sub-Saharan Africa, namely in uh, exploring um, Angolan and Mozambican um, markets. Um, 
I leave you here. This also, this is um, this is um, the ambassador um, Quintero Nobre that represented us um, in Korea. He he considered that Portugal has uh, competitive advantages for um, for um, Korean companies. It's a competitive economy, strategic location, good technological services, infrastructures workforce, fluent in languages, international partnership with educational um, institutions. Uh, finally, and if Ambassador allows me a couple of more minutes, uh, also cooperation in terms of, uh, of policy making. So I think that Portugal should uh, or could draw some, some lessons from what is, has been made um, in Korea. For example, as I mentioned before, Korea um, nowadays in 2021, according to IMF estimates, is it occupies the tenth place in terms of GDP, nominal GDP, with a, a GDP of 1.8 trillion US dollars. Portugal occupies the 14th, seventh place with 257 billion. And why am I showing you this comparison? Um, the countries are not the same. Um, so why am I doing this? Because in 1960, Portugal and South Korea shared a similar position in the ranking of GDP, both having a GDP of around 3 billion US dollars. So South Korea has given a, a huge step and particularly South Korea has become um, one of the largest exporters in the world. Uh, so Portugal could perhaps um, draw some lessons from there, particularly when almost 50% of our GDP is associated with exports. Of course, that we cannot do what uh, Park Shin hee did in the 1960s and, and 70s. Uh, we, we cannot move towards protectionist policies, etc. But we can look at other lessons, such as the emphasis on uh, education. Another point where we can cooperate health policy uh, look at the way that um, looking at the way that uh, South Korean government reacted um, to it in terms of production uh, production of strategic assets such as masks, test kits, the technological management of the pandemic using uh, apps such, such as an open API plus uh, Kakao Max and Kakao Maps plus best social practices. Unfortunately, um, in Portugal, um, we had a, a death toll. Uh, per million of 1,654, whereas in Korea only 36.3. Um, in terms of education policy, again, uh, South Korea is one of the countries with the highest number of PhDs and highest, also highest number of PhDs per um, per capita. It has had a strong bet uh, in education that may explain its economic um, success. And here, just to give you. Um, a clue, OECD, let's look at OECD PISA results for math. Korea occupies the second place, Portugal occupies the 21st place. In terms of uh, science results, Korea occupies the third place, Portugal occupies the 19th um, place. So some lessons that we may learn from here um, also. And finally, we have shared interests such as uh, um, sea uh, economy and an increased interest, particularly from the side of Portugal, on the economy um, of the sea, uh, renewable uh, energies, and also um, something damaging for our countries, which is a, 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 an aging population caused by low birth rates. Perhaps we should also focus on cooperating at these levels. Um, finally, so just to conclude, Portugal and South Korea partners since 1961. We have been increasing our ties since that um, period, but we still need to continue investing in bilateral relations, either through uh, public officials or through um, private uh, cooperations. I do think that our two countries can benefit a lot from it. Thank you very much for your time and attention. So, so thank, thank you very much, Professor. I would like to, to, to thank you for your very uh, thorough uh, lecture, which in a sense was complementary to, to the ambassadors, and they were both very interesting. And so I ask the floor to come up with questions or commentaries. So 
please, those in the audience, uh, the floor is open. You can uh, ask questions. So, anybody goes for, yes, please. Oh my God, so, on the right hand side, you, we, all, we already have two questions. The first one is, is there any prediction when travel collaboration between the two countries will resume when we will have the probably the flights and then uh, Joao Almeida Diaz he asks what the, the the Republic of Korea plan to achieve in the summit between President Moon Jae-in and President Biden uh, the summit that is going to take place on the 21st of May this year so uh, I do think that both questions would be uh, first to, to the ambassador, please, Ambassador Ho. So. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you for your uh, interest. And the first question regarding the, the uh, tourism collaboration between uh, Korea and Portugal, uh, the, the, am I correct? Yes, yes. W when it's going to, to resume, mm -hmm. the travel collaboration. I, I do think that, in a sense, it has to do with, with uh, if the flights will return, when we will accept and you will accept tourists. The, the couple of weeks ago, I met uh, the representative uh, for the, the tourism to Portugal, and yeah. we uh, discussed uh, ways on how to uh, increase uh, the human exchanges between uh, the two countries, especially you know, the, uh, we have the, the many Korean people who are ready to travel abroad uh, after the, the, uh, mm -hmm. the COVID situation uh, is stabilized. For example, uh, in 2019, uh, as I told before, that the, the number of the Korean people to visit Portugal was uh, only 200,000. But at the time, the total number of the Korean people who travel abroad was 29 million people. So, the out of 29 million, uh, the the 200,000 is very uh, the meager number. So that means that the, we have the more rooms, more potentials to develop, to attract uh, more Korean people to travel to Korea, uh, Portugal. That was why that the, we discussed uh, the with the, the tourism to Portugal, and. Uh, as I mentioned before, that the two years ago, that the, the a Korean carrier operated a direct flight uh, for the first time uh, for uh, four months. Yes. Uh -huh. It was at the just at the provisional uh, it, or the trial basis because uh, the Korean carrier uh, would like to accumulate the, the statistics in terms of business, and that the, after some trial. The, the direct flight, they will uh, engage in the, the studying in a more concrete way to uh, the regular, regularize the, the direct flight. And just before pandemic situation, the Korean carrier announced that they, uh, their uh, the plan to increase three times a week, uh, one, one more, one more the flight uh, the, rather than previously. So this was uh, the good news because uh, they thought that the, uh, they uh, the, the saw that the bright future uh, from the, the direct flight. So uh, the, during the, the pandemic situation, we uh, got that the uh, big uh, bang uh, regarding the, the two uh, major Korean uh, the carriers. Uh, one is Korean airline, the other one is Asiana. And Asiana was uh, um, merged into the, the Korean airline. So uh, 
the, I think that the Korean airline will study uh, the uh, direct flight between Korea and Lisbon because Korean airline was uh, the didn't operate the direct flight. So there was at the some time that the good news for us uh, to have that the direct flight run by the, the Korean airline. So with the, the Korean with with the direct flight, we uh, expect that the more Korean people visit to Portugal. And the as I said before that the many Korean people traveled a lot abroad, and that the Portugal was considered as a good. Uh, destinations, well, good tourism uh, places, uh, good reputation among the Korean people, uh, safety and the reasonable pri uh, prices and the nice weather, etc. So uh, this is the, 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 these are the, the good the factors, good elements uh, for us to attract the more Korean people uh, to here. And I think and I'm sure that this is a good basis uh, for the, the two governments to further develop the bilateral relationship. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ambassador. The other question that was uh, that is on the right hand side, it's the it, it regards the, the the meeting that is going to take place, the summit on the twenty first of May. Uh, in Washington, I don't know. Of course, that it is uh, 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 difficult to answer because the meeting is not has not taken yet place. But could you tell us a little bit about what we you expect from this first summit from, from your with your prime minister with, with the president of the United States? Uh, thank you again for your uh, interest on the, the situation on the Korean Peninsula and in Northeast Asia. Uh, the the summit meeting on uh, May 21st between the Korean President uh, Moon and the uh, U.S. President Biden was at the first uh, after uh, the, the uh, advent of uh, Biden administration. Sure. And at the first uh, the issue to be uh, discussed will be that the, uh, the North Korean nuclear issue because the very recently, very recently, the Biden administration announced their uh, North Korea policy uh, because you know, they already already uh, announced that they, uh, they, uh, uh, they propose to depart from the, the previous administration. So the 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 we are waiting for that the North Korean response uh, on the, the uh, U.S. Uh, U.S. the policy on North Korea. So this will be that the uh, number one the issue to be discussed between the two presidents, and the other one we expect is that the vaccines because at this time that the to cope with that the uh, the, the the international situation. Under the the, uh, the pandemic situation, the the vaccine is, will be the, the key to address. So at this time, that the the U.S. has that the, some the patent uh, to produce that the vaccines and that the so uh, the the how to address that the uh, the pandemic situation will be uh, also discussed. And the one more one more important the situation is. Uh, the, the bilateral relationship between Korea and Japan, because uh, our two countries are the close allied to the United States, especially in Northeast Asia. But unfortunately, uh, the the our government has uh, the uh, some kind of the thorny issues to be addressed with Japan coming from the, the uh, past history or uh, Japan Japan's government's very uh, recent announcement plan. Uh, to release uh, the contaminated water uh, from the, the uh, Fukushima nuclear plant. So these are also the, the uh, topics to be uh, addressed between Korean government and uh, Japan's government. And from the perspective of U.S. government, a trilateral cooperation attended by the U.S., Japan, and Korea is very important 
uh, to stabilize the, the situation in Northeast Asia. So the, I, I also anticipate that this, uh, this kind of the, the trilateral cooperation we also discuss uh, on the, the first summit on uh, the, the 21st of May. Okay, and the, the, these are the, the, uh, the topics I uh, anticipate and uh, that the, the remaining the others, okay, maybe we will wait and see. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Ambassador, I have another question that uh, can be for both of you, uh, both you and Professor Prayed Magalhães. And it, has, uh, it was formulated by, by uh, Rita Duran. And uh, the question is that, uh, do you see any, any specific role, political or otherwise, that Portugal could have in dealing with North Korea uh, nuclear issue in close cooperation with South Korea? Please. Uh, as I said before, that the uh, from the, the uh, in the, the past years, that the, there are many many approaches to deal with North Korean nuclear issue. Uh, that the sometimes that the with uh, three parties, and that the four parties, even that the six parties, and that the eight party talks was a ideation stage. Uh, but the at this time that the the uh, number one, number one uh, key in uh, de dealing with is that the North Korean response. That the, we hope that the North Korea should return to the, the dialogue table. But uh, at this time, that the, we presume that the North Korea was also affected by the pandemic corona situation. But uh, nobody knows uh, correctly about what is going on in North Korea. So the, that is why that the, at this time, that the, as I told you before, that the, we are waiting for the North Korean response to uh, that the uh, Biden administration's policy on North Korea, because nuclear issue is kind of the, the international uh, the, the nature, because it is very closely related to the, the non-proliferation. So North Korean Nuclear issue is sometimes the bilateral uh, between the two Koreas and at the same time international uh, in terms of the, the non-proliferation. That is why that the, uh, the, the U.S. policy on North Korea is very uh, significant and as much that the uh, North Korean response is also uh, the, the noted worthy. Okay, uh, I have another question. Uh, the way the Republic of Korea reacted to the COVID-19 pandemic, it's on the right hand side. Practically, from the start, is often hailed as a success. However, the vaccination stage hasn't been going so smoothly, as only 7% of the population has received at least one dose. What challenges has your country faced in this stage and, the, and what is the plan to, to overcome the situation? Uh, the ambassador, you know, the, your point is very, very uh, a, the, a sharp uh, to us because, you know, the last year, last year, uh, the Korea uh, could enjoy kind of the, the uh, stabilized in uh, dealing with the, uh, the COVID the situation because uh, the, in terms of the, the number of new cases, or that the uh, the the uh, mm, the Korea was kind of that the uh, the was in a, the better position uh, in comparison uh, with other countries. So there is why that the domestically domestically we have that the uh, criticism against the government because uh, the some the criticism was that the. The, our government do not secure that the enough vaccines uh, to to uh, to uh, the address the issues because uh, many the experts or many ex many scholars already pointed out that the, the vaccines are that the key to uh, solve uh, the situation, but. As I told you before, that the last year we enjoyed the, the kind of the, the comparative, the the, uh, the better situation there was. Why that the, we uh, 
was not, we were not uh, diligent in securing uh, the, the vaccines. So at this time, the, the, our government is uh, making every effort to secure the, the enough vaccines uh, from other countries. And as I told you before, that the, this issue will be the, the discussed uh, on the, the summit meeting between the Korean president and the, the U.S. president uh, uh, the, the, in May. Yes. Uh, another question, and it's a kind of follow-up question both to you and to Professor uh, Nunprayat Maganet. And this it is regarding the COVID-19 in, in North Korea. I would like to know what the, the, the South Korean press has been telling regarding the what they know about what's going on in, in North Korea. Please, Professor Prayad Maganesh, have you been reading? Oh, I Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, very interesting um, question. Um, you know, officially there are no cases of COVID-19 in, in North Korea. Yeah. So it's um, it's something that actually nobody nobody knows about what's going on. We know that uh, Kim Jong-un disappeared at, the, at what we think was the height of contagion in in North Korea, he, he likely disappeared because he is part of the, he's included in the risk group uh, of people who, who supposedly suffer more from COVID-19. But um, to be frank, we can only speculate on the situation. Um, Ambassador, if you don't mind, going back to a previous um, question that was made about the role of Portugal. Uh, to be frank, and uh, Rita uh, Durel knows this, I'm not the most optimistic person in regard to the possibilities of successful denuclearization of North Korea. In any case, uh, I consider as ambassador or does that um, any type of solution has to go through the US, China, South Korea, potentially with the involvement of Japan, and um, Russia. Um, the role that Portu Portugal could have, um, frankly speaking, would be could be something highly symbolic. For example, um, Singapore and Vietnam play that role highly symbolic in hosting the meeting between um, uh, Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump. I don't think it would be feasible for Portugal to do that in the foreseeable future, but um, for a Portuguese rule, I, I don't see anything more than this kind of symbolic, uh, symbolic actorness. Uh, as for the European Union, we have been looking at positive incentives of the European Union and negative incentives of the European Union towards denuclearization. The positive uh, incentives of the European Union come in the form of of development policy and to some extent to some inputs in, in terms of conflict management, a role that the European Union uh, could play. Uh, but the EU has been more active now in terms of negative incentives, namely bilateral sanctions being imposed on North Korea according to what has been decided by the UN Security Council since 2006, the date of the first um, nuclear test. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have another question that is uh, focused on what we have been doing in Seoul, what our embassy has been doing in Seoul regarding also those 60 years. And I know that we have Ambassador uh, Jesus, uh, Gonzalo Jesus, uh, following our conference. So I, I would like to ask him to answer to these questions. <laughs> regarding the, the, the programming of the commemorations for the 60 years in Seoul. Um, <laughs> thank you, Vasil. I was not waiting for the question, but I was what I was I was following the very yes. the of the, uh, the, the, the conference. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that I had been here because it was very interesting yeah. to hear that. Yes. So um, let me just um, 
salute all the all the participants, Ambassador O, and uh, of course to some guys and yourself as the as, uh, as, uh, as uh, uh, president of the diplomatic institute for, for, your, for your participation, all, all the others. Um, we, um, of course, we have a, a limitation that has to do with COVID. Everybody has this limitation. Uh, but uh, although we had been, uh, had been, um, uh, had been uh, 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 arranging uh, some, at least some of the, some of the program is going on. As ambassador already already mentioned, you have two two um, conference that we organize this month. The first one is the twenty first uh, conference that is in the in the academic uh, academic um, uh, field. It's University of Hamburg. It's one of, of the most uh, most uh, important uh, um, universities here in 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 Korea. They have. Uh, Quite the the, the, the uh, department of Portuguese that, uh, um, that um, uh, also um, uh, center uh, Portuguese uh, the Portuguese language and this, uh, the first one is on the first conference this month is on the twenty first and it's organized by the 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 Institute for European Studies. And also the Department of Portuguese in the, in the university that we invite a, a number of of um, of the Portuguese uh, and the Korean relations. Ah. And also this is included of course in the collaboration of the sixth anniversary. Of the, the diplomatic relations that the sure, sure. uh, six, six years. Uh, the other conference is on the 29th, where we have also the a, a key speaker, a speaker, the president of the Institute for Cooper Cooperation, the, the, the Asian, the Portuguese Agents for the Cooperation and the, and the, and the, and language, the Camões Institute, that uh, will will participate in this conference. We have. Uh, um, I don't have the program in front of me, but it have basically it will look into the, the the relations between Korea and Portugal in the perspective on the future. So it will have also the this the digital transition, the green the green uh, the climate climate changes uh, the way each country is is taking this uh, this new economy, the green economy. Also, it will have. Uh, uh, um, um, uh, one uh, one chapter related with the cultural cultural the cultural relations between between Portugal and Korea, and also the uh, lang the language the the um, the Portuguese language uh, uh, here in Korea. How do we what are you doing to promote and develop the 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 the, the, the Portuguese language that as you know. Is one of the most important at, at, at the, the universal, universal in the world in terms of of the, the number of speakers and also the, the 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 use of the Portuguese language in the internet, the, the, the digital world. So this will be the the in, during this month. It will be the the the, the two two. Uh, to conference related with that, where we will have the opportunity to uh, to uh, to uh, to see uh, to uh, to uh, to uh, how the the what are you doing in these important fields in the 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 relation between the two countries. Then later on we will have um, um, the the festival of, of Portuguese uh, Portuguese cinema. Where we have the uh, the two sections, one related with the, the classics, the what what are the what are those from Manuel Oliveira, and uh, you know this that are always that has always great interest in the in this in this in this uh, in this country, uh, and uh, also a section that will deal with the, what are you doing now in terms of cinema, those uh, new new uh, directors. 
uh, at the same time, <coughs> we participate uh, with in the, the the review of the, the the European studies that will be published this uh, this um, this at the end of this month uh, with uh, um, an article that the, the embassy prepared myself and also the as I was told that the embassy will will we also have one one article regarding the 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 the, 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 the relations between Portugal and Korea. This will will have uh, um, will uh, in these articles we will will speak not only at least from from our side not only what uh, what what are the, the 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 relations right now what is the the situation right now but also in the perspective historic perspective just um, underlying. Uh, that uh, our contacts between the contacts between Portugal and Korea does not start only 60 years ago, but goes much more, much more uh, far in the in the history of the world, especially when it comes to the 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 from the the 16th century and from the the Portuguese uh, Portuguese the first Portuguese the first globalization, if you may. If you may so. Sure, sure. So, so uh, the, these are some uh, so what, what we are doing uh, doing now. Then we'll have the visit uh, the, the economic the, 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 the commission economical that will will um, um, meet in uh, hopefully on the 16th of June here in So it will be one of the maybe one of the first visits that we hope that that uh, by then the, the situation will be uh, when it comes to the pandemic will be will 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 be uh, better will improve and so you can have this uh, this um, presen presidential uh, um, meeting so uh, um, uh, we others others uh, um, other initiatives that you have that related with the commercial the, the regarding with the economical world these ones will be postponed for the hopeful for the, the second semester for the second half of the year but uh, right now i think that, that these are the main the main um, 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 actions or happenings that we we'll have in here in, and so, um, and uh, I also also uh, um, participated last month in the in the Univers University of Hanguk in one meeting that um, the Saturday was related with the, also the sixth anniversary. At least I mentioned it. To participate, but yes, to do what the meeting that organized by the Minist Ministry of Education here mm -hmm. and the university where the uh, uh, program that they have related to the critical language where the, uh, I, I represent the, the Lusophon, Lusophon world. And I have the opportunity also to, to mention and to speak about the, the, the moment that is uh, the celebrations of the 60th uh, anniversary. I don't want to go to the one. Uh, okay. uh, don't, I don't have so. The, um, Thank you. Uh, uh, Thank but you so much. Have, uh, the main uh, um, initiative. I, I'm sorry, I don't have, I was not waiting for your answer. No, your I understand. No. Asking, well. <laughs> but uh, but yes. I try to be the more, more uh, organized and in the objective, objective, objective ways. The the that asked us in the here. So thank you so much, Manuel. Thank you. Yes. I know it's very, it's late already in, in Seoul. At now, what time is no, it? No, not so much. Now, uh, nine hours, 20 minutes. Oh, well, no, that's that's like, that's like. <laughs> okay. So, thank you so much. I would like to ask a, a, a last question, and it has to do with uh, the, um, the, the bilateral relations uh, and the COTRA, the COTRA agency. Joanne Gaspar asks whether the, the it's, you are considering opening a, a, a culture agency here, a delegation here in Lisbon. 
Did, did he say new for, for the best role? For me? Uh, I, I think for Ambassador, oh, but if you can answer, please. Yeah. Uh, uh, for Ambassador. Ambassador Wu, please. Okay, uh, thank you for the, uh, yes, thank you for a kind explanation from the, the Ambassador Jesus. So, okay, the, the issue regarding the, the Kutra is very significant to, uh, to our embassy as well, because as many people already know that the, uh, the, uh, the economic, economic cooperation between our two countries is not enough in considering uh, our the economic power. So that means that the, uh, we need to do more in enhancing uh, the, the economic cooperation. So one of the, uh, the, the factors is the reopening the, the Kotra office in uh, Lisbon. And I like to recall the, my uh, the, the text, uh, the speech uh, before that the, I'm looking forward to the, the uh, high ranking, uh, high ranking the visit between the governments. The, for example, that the uh, two years ago, that the Portuguese government uh, the the uh, they made decision for the, the uh, Prime Minister Costa's visit to Korea. That it's kind of the, the good occasion uh, to, for the, the uh, two governments to discuss in a more concrete way. So the, I'm looking forward to the, the high-ranking officials visit to Korea or vice versa. And actually, we already uh, talked to the, the Kotra, the headquarters in Seoul about that. And the, the, they, I was told that the, they they would like to review this issue on the occasion of the, the uh, high-ranking uh, officials' visit. So, uh, the, the, I think that the, uh, the, the atmosphere is ripe uh, for the, the reopening. So, we are looking forward to the, the, uh, the, the good timing, good occasion to be discussed. Yes, thank you so much, Ambassador. We have a, a, a last question now from Nicole Dabrio Rebelo, and she asks two questions in a sense. First, what are the plans to improve the exchange, the students' exchange between the two countries, uh, scholarships and so on? And uh, then she asks a very interesting question. She, she says that, uh, how could we, as Portuguese citizens, be able to help Koreans feel more integrated and comfortable in our country, promoting our culture, but not being uh, intrusive. Please, Ambassador. The, which which ambassador? The me or you? You first. Oh, oh, okay, okay, thank. You. Okay, the first, the second, second question, the regarding the, the integration of the, the Korean community, Korean members of the Korean community in here, in Portugal. Uh, I, I like to say, I like to say, I like to, I'm happy to say to you that the very recently we organized that the, uh, the Korean, the future generation network in Portugal. Uh -huh. uh, the, what I mean is that the, the, the future generation is very young and uh, they uh, got they attended the school in here in Portugal, so they have no language barrier, even in Portuguese. So they are very ready to uh, integrate with the, uh, the, the Portuguese the society. So this, I think that this is a very good the signal uh, for the, the Korean community to have the, the more interactions with the Portuguese society and uh, the, the, uh, the uh, be integrated into the, the Portuguese society, and at this time, at this time, that the, uh, the we have that the more the, the Korean people are using that the uh, golden visa the system. So, mm -hmm. the anyhow that the the as I told you the several times that the Portugal should be more promoted among the Korean people. Sure. So 
there is why that the people to people exchange is very significant. The as that the Portugal is promoted more among the Korean people, then we can catch that the the eyes or the attention of the Korean people, general people and Korean businessmen onto Portugal. So in the sense, in the sense that the the, the ambassador Jesus and I have the, the many many things homework to do in promoting the the, uh, the human exchanges between our two countries. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Professor Preyad Magalhães. You ask the floor, please. Thank you very much, Thank Ambassador. Uh, first of all, allow me to say hello to Ambassador Manuel Gonçalves de Jesus, who is not only a very humane person who is um, doing an excellent job in representing our country in Korea, but is also uh, always willing to support um, uh, the Portuguese citizens living there. It's a pleasure to see you and to, and, and to hear you. Um, in respect to, to the question, um, first of all, I would like to share a little bit of my experience as a student in South Korea. I had some of you know, the most amazing times in my life. So for those of you who are students and are here in this webinar or parents who want their students to study abroad, um, I would definitely suggest South Korea. And, and I, I had studying experience in Portugal, in the UK, in the US, in South Korea, and I would definitely recommend the South Korea. Great social environment, cultural environment, and very strong uh, universities. Uh, as for um, integrating uh, Koreans uh, in Portugal, I think that um, the more Portuguese people meet and get to know the Korean ones, they will see that we share a lot of uh, characteristics. Even if our cultures are not the same, the cultural root of our uh, populations are not the same, um, but our, our social interactions, I think, are very similar. So we have this predisposition to, to cooperate even at this, uh, at this level. Thank you. Thank you. Ambassador Gonçalves, do you want to add something? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Yes. This, yeah. this question is, is, is very important. Uh, we all know uh, it was mentioned quite, it was mentioned here not only by, by Kosovo Magalhães, but also by Ambassador Ho. And uh, these contacts to people to people are very important. It's more than we can do that we are doing what we can to the, as institu institutions to promote uh, relations between Portugal and, and, and South Korea. Because in fact, when you look to the potential, uh, we, 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 we can realize in the, even in the, this empirical way, looking to the numbers of the two, the two countries. When we look to South, South Korea and the impressive development has in the last 10, 10 15 years, uh, this, this, uh, the potential is there. When you look, and it was mentioned here, to the head of 2019, and in fact, we, 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 when we, we, we reflect, uh, uh, when we speak about the, the, the Portuguese and the, and the Korean relations, in a certain way, you stop at the end of 2009 because then there was the pandemic and everything was 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 frozen. I mean, waiting for that that the virus goes away and we can again go to the work, travel, speaking to each other. So people to people contacts go to the normal. And in the end of 2009, we have this impressive number of more than 150,000 to people to. Korean uh, national visiting Portugal. It's an impressive, impressive number, especially when we look to the the, the 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 growth that we have in a few years. So all of these people that went to Portugal uh, and uh, have this experience that live within us and speak with the Portuguese, taste the Portuguese food, the Portuguese wine. The, what is the, the what is the, the, the the, the economy now in in Portugal, very far from this stereotype of the past. That now, in the modern economy, uh, the, you know the, the the all of these the, the signs of the future renewables. You know the uh, the, the you know, green deal. Uh, what are you experiencing in Portugal? And it's not only 
Denmark not only Holland, but I guess more power to express themselves and show what they are doing in this field. But we are doing quite an impressive, impressive, impressive job. So people come back and they want to continue to uh, to have the the gastronomic the gastronomy Portuguese to to keep looking to the Portuguese culture. There is a demand for the for the for for all these products. And in fact, when Magalhães spoke about, for instance, the question of wines, the way that they are not selling, we are not selling in 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 uh, South Korea. It's also a result of this experience. It's 150,000 that visit Portugal uh, come back in demand in the, to have to have the key also here access to these products. But the, then there is the, the question of the students. In fact, we have uh, now uh, uh, a number that has been has been growing in the last years. Uh, the, of, of the young people that want to come to to, to, the, to the to South Korea because the, they have in fact quite the, the best universities not only in Asia and not only in this first Asian economy that is now South Korea but also in, when you compare it to the world the problem is that and I can see that can see this is that uh, the places the, the 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 you know in universities when they want to come. University, there is a limitation. There is a small number of uh, of uh, of uh, of, um, of um, possibilities to 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 stay here in Erasmus. Uh, the, you know all of these these programs that exist. So we need, in fact, to increase this uh, this, uh, this uh, the, to enlarge this number of students that can come to South, to South Korea, but also the number of of the South Korean students that want to go to Portugal. And when you look to the universities, Portuguese universities, the number of of of, of places here in in the universities have, that they have to offer to their students is quite small compared with the number of 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 students that want to come to to these universities. You know, not only the most known universities, but also the others because the others that are not within these three or four or five best universities considered the best university university but also the others are quite are quite quite have a quite good level of 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 teaching and the and the the, the, prog the the programs that they have to offer so we this is a, 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 an area where we have to do a work especially with the number of 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 places with the number of of uh, of um, school scholarships that, that we have to offer there, and uh, this, in fact, is a limitation that you have, and we, we should uh, is our work is mine here in the universities in the in the embassy, but is uh, also the ambassador hall in, in in Portugal. I'm sure, and I know how how interested he is to work in this in this field and how in, how impressive his work has been. Uh, 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 it has been done in, in, in Portugal. So it's a very important question. And the use, in fact, is, is uh, uh, quite uh, well uh, uh, true that the, the, the use is our future, for sure. Mm -hmm. There is a, is, a, is a field where we have to to work. And then the, you know, this contact people to people brings also the, 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 the the knowledge of the, the the economy, what we do, what what we do, the best that we do in Portugal, and also the best that that, uh, that we can find in the in the South South Korean economy. Thank, Without you. Going, I just... thank you so much. I would like to thank Ambassador Ho. I would like to thank also Professor Pred Magalhães for uh, their participation. Uh, uh, we know, we already see in the horizon, we hope, the end of the pandemic, and uh, it's going to be a moment to give a new impetus to our relations, I think. I took the hint from Ambassador O relating the necessity of uh, uh, having uh, video conferences at the political level, and I'm going to pass on this information. And the other thing also is that we need to have a high level visit to uh, Korea in order uh, to, to, in a sense, to, to probably have the Cotra agency in Portugal. So 
Thank you so much for your presence. Thank you so much for our participation. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.